We'll talk about the Crows in a few moments time and those super subs, but Lee, Carlton Footy Club. They were four and naught. They didn't look like a four and naught team. And I don't think Adelaide looked like a naught and four team either. And that was part of the reason that the result shifted. Well, they were 15 points in front uh, yeah. with seven or eight minutes to go. They were going to win. But then Adelaide had a really good last... Uh, last well, kicked the last three goals of the game to win. And it was interesting. You mentioned Sam Berry, who came on as the sub. He looked about 10 yards faster than any other player <laughs> in the ground. Now, in the pre-game, I couldn't understand this. Adam Cherry was the last minute out. They poured in Mark Pitney. So a midfielder went out, a ruckman came in. <laughs> and I thought to myself, Jimmy, we were sitting there watching mm. the game. I thought about halfway through the third quarter, they'll sub Pitney off and Carroll will come in as a runner. Yeah. But they got a couple of injuries. And, of course, Carroll was on well before that and Pitney had to stay on the ground. And, gee, I reckon uh, Carlton would have loved to run. So I cannot understand the logic of why a midfielder is a last minute out and you bring in a ruckman as a replacement. It just doesn't add up to well, me. Well, Voss learnt everything from you, didn't he? He was your premiership captain <laughs> well, time Well, used three. to play two ruckmen back in that <laughs> era, but in this era, it's hard to play two, uh, two yeah. genuine ruckmen because it does affect the overall running power of your 22. Yeah. And there were 15 lead, lead changes in this game, Jimmy. It was a cracker of a match at Marvel Stadium. Yeah, the, the moments that mattered in, in the end for me, coaches can teach you how to play in the big moments as far as where you need to set up, the structure, uh, whatever it may be. But it comes down to skill execution when everyone's exhausted. And this is be a key theme in the, in the next couple of games we look at that was so close on Super Saturday. Drop mark. Always needs a sand bucket because he misses his foot there, so he missed one. <laughs> but the opposite end of the field, Matt Crouch's handball there was so quick and so perfect, and Keys as well. That's the handball drill you do a couple of times a week. Again, comes in, Kerno gets a nice run at it, drop mark again. It's just the fundamentals. But you look at the Crows, pressure on, tackle, Crouch again. Got to give him his dues how good he was. The dying stages, sidestep, yep. clean handball. Keys again, contested mark down the line. And then you watch as the ball comes back in, final chance. Keen backs himself in the big mark, contested mark, clean. Yeah. Yeah, it's all the skill, fundamentals when you're big moments. You've yeah. got to get in the right position, of course. Yeah. You've got to deliver the fundamentals. And a controversial score review there as well. It seems like every week we're talking about the score review, Jimmy. And you were uh, hot on this in round one. Do you think he touches it or not? No. <laughs> oh, I, th I think it's one of those moments I think we'll look back on this week and the AFL might want to have yeah, it again. Well, I didn't think Carlton were that bad. Adelaide, they kicked 16 goals, four, didn't they? I mean, they just couldn't miss. In expected scores, yeah. Carlton probably won by six goals. <laughs> we don't deal with expected scores, <laughs> Lee. You know that. Uh, yeah, sorry, Jimmy. Yeah, the midfield mix for me, Tom. Yeah. I know I was one of many screaming out, let's change it up because we know what Crouch led and even Berry looked like and we highlighted that with the Hawks. It was a bit too much the same. Because you were hot on Adelaide the last few weeks. Did they get it right this week? Well, I think they got it absolutely right. And the tempo of the game and the speed of the game and it actually gave their forwards better look. They kicked over 100 points and look at this, Saligo, Rankin, a lot more time in the midfield. Rankin was probably best man on the ground and as I was saying, you don't have to get rid of Crouch and Laird but just get that mix right and Crouch was big in the final moments. Berry come on as we mentioned the super sub. They just looked a little bit more dynamic. Rochelle started in a lot of centre bounces as well. They ask a lot more questions of the opposition when Rank they do it. Rankin's one of those players, if he gets 20 disposals, yeah. something happens. Yeah. So if he can get half a dozen bo uh, balls out of that centre square area. He kicks the ball beautifully. Yeah. He kicks goals himself but just adds some life to that midfield group that you've been talking about since the start of the year, Jimmy. <laughs> as, a, as they were a bit slow as a group, yeah. now they've got a bit of speed there. And it was good to see Adelaide scoring again. Their transition was back. They're, they scored 100 points. They were the last year's highest scoring team. Well, Tex Walker had a good game. Tex Walker him. was back to his best. Yeah. yeah, it's good to see the Crows playing some good footy again. Not so Carlton, who probably struggled a little bit over the past couple of weeks, Lee. They've got some key injuries as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, as I say, I thought this was a game where the, the accuracy of, of, uh, of the Crows kept them in the game. So I didn't think Carlton were that bad. But either way, they were still in front, 15 points in front, yeah. with, with only you know, eight, seven, eight minutes to go. And then with, with three minutes to go, they were uh, probably three points in front. And Charlie Kerner got sent back in defence, which is what they do. But with about three minutes to go, as soon as Charlie Kerner goes back in defence, every Carlton plays it, oh, we're in defensive mode. Yep. And we're defending as opposed... We're, we're stop attacking now. So that's and a mistake from the coach? Well, it can be. Like, Richmond, they did it. Yeah. And they got home, but the ball was in Richmond's forward line for the last five minutes. And this time, yeah, the ball got into the uh, Crows' forward line and Sam Berry was able to kick the goal. Not necessarily because Charlie Curnow was there, but it's a message it sends. You've got to be really careful about shutting down the game with more than about a minute to go. Yeah, so one, one, minute, one minute's your threshold. About one minute for me. Yeah, OK. That's their next five. And it's not easy for Carlton. There's a big month coming up for them. 
um, with some good teams there, Jimmy. Their injuries are an issue as well. They've got a long injury list. We know about Jeremy McGovern's hamstring from Saturday. Adam Saad as well. Chera was a late withdrawal. Sam Walsh came back in and played some great oh, footy. Yeah. But Michael Voss has got plenty of his hands all of a sudden. Yeah, and it's more structurally as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the importance on Williams now because being that ball user off the back half, Saad and McGovern. McGovern's been really good as being that kicker. He's a long kicking player. And we know Saad is a, a line breaker. Once he tucks it under his arm and the big woof as he sends it down yeah. the field. Speaking of injuries, the Giants had plenty. They managed to get away with a win. They're still unbeatenly. But the Saints yes. kicked the last six goals of this game to come roaring back and almost got over the line. It feels like one of those results which St Kilda could have easily pinched at the end. Well, it's funny when you get into this holding on to the game mode. I mean, they, they were five, six goals in front, and all of a sudden it's four, and then it's three, then it's two, then it's one. And, and you can see the Giants were in real defensive mode, mm. and eventually mm. uh, St Kilda, that mark from uh, Peatling, wasn't it, that actually stopped, the, stopped yeah. that final goal, maybe? Uh, as, as I said to you, gentlemen, it'll come down to the dying moments, which I want to really highlight. Yep. Again, fundamentals, being brave, but now being to execute. Now, watch this. This is Lockie Ash at the top of the screen with Higgins. Great little lead that Higgins and kick coming at him. But Ash fights back. Higgins tries to mark on his chest, gets that spoil in and wins the footy. Peeling was brave enough to drop off Sinclair here. Chest mark. If he drops that, that's Sinclair going into an open goal. So one, you've got to be brave enough to make the decision, brave enough to go back with the flight, yeah. but execute it, hold on to it, and you have a look at the rest of his teammates. Thank you, yeah. thank you, because yeah. we just coughed up a six-goal lead and you just helped us win the game. OK, so what are the Giants' issues then? Because they haven't been at their absolute best mm -hmm. the last couple of weeks. They've got some great players, a good coach, um, their game style's entertaining, but it's not all perfect, is it, Jimmy? No, no pressure, no premiership for me with the Giants. I know everyone focuses on the tsunami and the ball movement, but it's got to come off the back of the pressure around the contest. We have a look at their numbers last year, the pressure rating. Third, 184. You look at it at the moment, it's 16th. They're falling to the bit of this trap in games, and especially in quarters in particular, where it's your turn, our turn, your turn, yeah. our turn. It turns into a big transition game, and they've just had a little bit more class than in the opposition, a bit more polish which gets them win. But that style of footy doesn't stand up in finals if you give away quarters with very little pressure. Is there some concern around the Giants, or do you think they've got time? Oh, well, that might be one aspect of the game. I mean, they haven't been beaten yet, so, yeah, no. I mean, we're, we're picking, uh, picking at straws a well, little bit. Well, it's good learning while you're winning. That's it's, right. it's good yeah, fun. Yeah. 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 Um, St Kilda have had five very, very close games. I think their total losing margin across the three games they've lost is 13 points, mm. two close wins as well. Uh, what would Ross Lyon be saying to his team now, Lee? Well, I mean, the fact that they, they kept fighting, I mean, they really never looked like they were going to win the game until about the last five or ten minutes when all of a sudden they came, they came really strongly in the end. So, I mean, I, I think they're a competitive team, St Kilda, no doubt about that. I mean, yep. they're, whether they're in that top contender bunch, not for me yet, but they're certainly a hard team to play against yeah. uh, for anyone. I mean, Max King hurt himself a little bit. That probably didn't help them in their, uh, in their overall game. But um, no, they're, uh, they're competitive. But I, yeah, I mean, Giants are rightly being... They're going as well as anyone. So some injuries there I mentioned before. So Stephen Canelio with a knee. It's a medial. Two weeks, the club has said tonight. This looked a concern for Sam Taylor as well with a concussion. Now, it looked really bad. But because they play two games in 11 days, oh, the God. GWS Giants, he'll miss two matches. That's Canelio there. And Max King as well with a knee. Now, this was potentially an ACL, but they're hopeful he'll play on Thursday night, the Saints, which is good news. Yeah, for all three gentlemen, I think at first look, we thought all three of them were going to miss a, a considerable amount of footy. Yep. You know, we thought maybe an ACL both for King and Canelio, and it was pretty horrific viewing when you watch Sam Taylor, that collision face down. Yep. It looked pretty gross. That, that's sobering, isn't it? Yeah. It doesn't happen too often, thank goodness. But when he went down and didn't move, mm. and there was five minutes, ten minutes, well, hope the poor kid's OK. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't, as I say, doesn't happen too often, but it's a really sobering, sombre sort of feeling, wait, waiting to know that, as it is, he's OK and, uh, yeah. and will be in good shape eventually. Three pretty 